Welcome commissioners, CDE staff, and members of the public. I am Kimberly Young, and as a former member of the 2023 Instructional Quality Commission Executive Committee, I call this meeting to order. Public comment on today's meeting agenda items may be provided during the meeting either in person or by signing up on the sheet located at the back table or by dialing 667-770-1523 and then following a prompt to provide a participant access code. Callers will then be added to a queue. The operator will notify callers when it is their turn to provide public comment. If possible, we recommend members of the public dialing in for public comment continue to view the live stream of the meeting for a better understanding of the meeting status. When it is your turn, please mute the live cast audio. When giving public comment, please state the following. Commissioners for, uh, commenters first and last name, organizations affiliation, if any, and public comment. Again, the phone number is 667-770-1523. The access code is 651905. The phone number and access code will also be announced at the start of public comment for each item. This is also outlined on the January 24, 25, 2024 IQC agenda posted on the IQC webpage. I'd like to introduce our new State Board of Education appointed commissioners to the IQC. Lena Bradshaw, Jacque Durant, Cheryl F uh, Frey, and Javier Hernandez. They each received an oath of administration yesterday. Commissioners, would you like to say a few words? Thank you. Um, I'm Commissioner Bradshaw, and I'd like to say I'm very grateful and thank you uh, for the opportunity uh, to serve on the Instructional Quality Commission, and I'm looking forward to working with everyone and moving um, our educational system forward. Thank you. Commissioner Durant. Thank you. Um, so, Commissioner Durant, um, I just want to say I'm excited for this wonderful opportunity. And I look forward to the new responsibilities in this role, and I appreciate everyone for their support. Thank you. I'm excited and honored to be on the Instructional Quality Commission and um, lending my experiences to, um, from teachers and students to the IQC and working with all of you. Good morning. Uh, thank you uh, for having me here today. Um, I'd like to. Um, just share that I'm really excited um, and elated to be part of this group. I look forward to working with uh, my fellow commissioners, as well as, as well as Dr. Torres and his team, um, who are amazing. Um, I also would like to say that I'm going to draw from uh, the 25 years of experience in education in terms of working with teachers, teacher leaders, and students uh, to be able to uh, contribute to this commission. Finally, I, finally, I'd like to say that I'm very humbled and proud to be here as a as an immigrant uh, from Guatemala, and so I look forward to um, bringing that experience as well. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome to all of the new commissioners. We're excited to have you on the IQC. Now I will introduce each commissioner participating in today's meeting. When I call your name, unmute your microphone and confirm your attendance, then mute your microphone again. Commissioner Lena Bradshaw. Present. Commissioner Jacque Durant. Present. Commissioner Anita Friedman. Present. Commissioner Cheryl Frey. Present. Commissioner Cherise Sh Guerra. Present. Commissioner Javier Hernandez. Present. Commissioner Jennifer Hicks. Present. Commissioner Janet Lanning. Present. Commissioner Neil McGaffey. Present. Commissioner Alisa Rogosa. Present. Commissioner Nikki Reina Guerra. Present. Commissioner Ku Vang. Present. Commissioner Marcy Winower. Commissioner Erica Zepeda. Student Commissioner Ethan Chen. Present. Assembly Member James Ramos. Senator Ben Allen. 
Student Commissioner Chen will now lead us in the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Yesterday, we conducted an orientation that provided an opportunity for new and returning commissioners to learn and reflect upon the commission's policies, procedures, and goals. Next on the agenda is the election of the chair, vice chair, and the additional three members of the executive committee. Uh, these elections are conducted by our executive director, Dr. Mike Torres. I now turn the gavel over to him. Thank you so much, Commissioner Young. The elections for the 2024 Commission Chairperson, Vice Chairperson, and Executive Committee shall be separate elections conducted in that order according to Robert's Rules of Order with nominations made from the floor. The election shall be made by a majority vote of voting members. The Chairperson and the Vice Chairperson must receive a majority of the votes cast in order to be elected, and the three Executive Committee members will be the three nominees who received the most executive committee votes. Now in cases when there are more than two candidates for chair or vice chair and no one receives a majority of those votes cast, then the two candidates with the most votes shall continue to the next round of voting. The candidate with the most votes in the second round will then be elected. No one may be a candidate without being present at the meeting and without one's consent and per the bylaws, Terms of office shall be one year, re-electable, except that the commission chairperson may not serve more than two successive terms. Is there any discussion? Good on wait time. I will now be taking nominations for chair. So feel free to Unmute. I'd like to nominate Commissioner Young for chair. Commissioner Hicks nominates Commissioner Young. I'd like to nominate Commissioner Guerra. Commissioner Lanning nominates Commissioner Guerra. Do I have all the nominations? And do all the nominees accept the nomination? Yes. All right. Um, so we now, um, <clears throat> so we'll, we'll have a vote now for, uh, by show of hands, the candidate that um, receives the majority of votes will be elected as chair. So um, by show of hands, um, the nomination to have Commissioner Young as chair of the IQC for 2024. Um, please raise your hands. Okay. And by show of hands, um, all those uh, who would like to elect uh, Commissioner Guerra to the uh, chair position of the IQC, please raise your hand. Thank you. Commissioner Guerra is chair. All right, I will now take nominations for vice chair. I'd like to nominate Commissioner Young for vice chair. Commissioner Lanning nominates Commissioner Young for vice chair. Do I have all the nominations? Commissioner Young, do you accept the nomination? I do. All right, then by acclamation, Commissioner Young is the vice chair of the commission. Um, 
All right, so I'll now take the nominations for three executive committee members. The executive committee is elected to advise the commission chairperson in the performance of their duties in relation to the commission. I would like to nominate Commissioner Hicks. Commissioner Young nominates Commissioner Hicks. I would like to nominate Commissioner Reina Guerra. Commissioner Regoza nominates Commissioner Reina Guerra. I'd like to nominate Commissioner Regoza. Commissioner Hicks nominates Commissioner Regoza. Do I have all the nominations? And do all the nominees accept the nomination to the executive committee? All right. Um, so since there are three nominations for the executive committee members, and this election is complete by acclamation. Commissioners Hicks, Reina Guerra, and Regosa are on the executive committee. All right. I now turn the gavel over to your 2024 commission chair, Guerra. Congratulations. No, you guys can stay. I'd like to thank everybody for their confidence in leading and facilitating our work together um, for the 2024 year. Um, I appreciate um, the collaborative nature of this group and I look forward to our work as we move into this new um, endeavor. Uh, so on to the next item, approval of the minutes. Um, the public comment for this agenda item is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you would like to give public comment on the minutes. You have the minutes of the November 15th, 2023 IQC meeting before you. If you have a substantive change, please present them now. If there are minor changes not affecting the content, please email them to Denise Figueroa, IQC liaison. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? I move to approve the November um, minutes. The motion has been made by Commissioner Reina Guerra. Is there a second to the motion? I second that motion. The motion has been seconded by Commissioner Vang. Is there any discussion on the motion? Is there any public comment on the motion? There is no public comment. The, co the public comment line for this item is now closed. I now call for a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Anyone abstaining from the vote? Motion carried. Actually, Denise, I think I made a mistake. I think you're supposed to tell me. That's okay. The motion passes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, we'll get this right. <laughs> uh, next item is 1F, my chair report, which I have no chair report at this time. Next item is item 1G, the deputy superintendent's report. Deputy Superintendent Cotton is presenting at a conference and unable to attend today's meeting. Therefore, we will move on to item 1H, the executive director's report. Thank you so much and congratulations to you, Chair Guerra, uh, for your newly appointed position to the IQC in this new role. Hello and good morning, commissioners, and welcome new commissioners Bradshaw, Durant, Fry, and Hernandez. Good morning and thank you for being here, State Board of Education member Lewis, and hello to the members of the public who are joining us virtually or in person today. I'd like to begin my report in recognition of the space and the history of the place where we're meeting today. We're not the original caretakers of this land. To that, we thank the ancestors of the Nisenan people. I honor all those who have called this land home before we have. Now on to my updates. As I mentioned during our orientation yesterday, our Seaford Division has been busily working on all things related to curriculum and instruction on behalf of the State Superintendent of Public Instruction. 
We have several ongoing projects from prior year's legislation that we continue to move forward. We are working on four new model curricula pursuant to AB 167, the first of which that I'd like to share about are the three Southeast Asian model curricula. The statewide model curriculum coordinating council members reviewed the model curricula and provided oral feedback to the Orange County Department of Education staff at the October 25th, 2023 meeting. Written feedback from council members was compiled by West Ed staff and sent to the Orange County Department of Education project lead in mid-December. Orange County Department of Education staff will apply those edits and make final preparations for the Hmong History and Cultural Studies, Vietnamese American Experience, and the Cambodian American Studies curricula during the winter of 2023 through the spring of 2024. We anticipate that the final curricula are expected to be delivered to the Department of Education in June of 2024. Another related project is the Native American Studies model curriculum. The San Diego County Office of Education and the Humboldt County Office of Education teams each provided their first draft of that model curriculum to the council for their review. West Ed prepared review documents for the council members who also reviewed that model curricula. Written feedback from the council members was compiled and sent to uh, those two county office of education leads in early December and draft two of that curriculum will be then delivered to the Department of Education in late spring of 2024. I'd like to pivot now and speak to the work that's being done on the California Dyslexia Initiative. The CDI, uh, as we call it, has continued to offer a variety of professional development opportunities by having five additional cohorts for the Language Essentials Teachers of Reading, or the Letters Training, and an ongoing expert webinar series throughout the 23-24 year. Topics in the webinar series include supporting English language learners, differentiating instruction, and using assessment data to inform instruction. Furthermore, the CDI is offering an on-demand dyslexia course bundle that covers topics of understanding dyslexia and dysgraphia, intensifying instruction for struggling readers, and serving students with dyslexia for school psychologists. Now pivoting over to arts and music, very important topics. The Seaford staff have been working on implementing this very important Prop 28 Arts and Music in Schools Act. We're continuously updating the Frequently Asked Questions webpage, and in addition, we're developing uh, programmatic components, including a digital portal for waiver requests and annual reporting. We're also working on a series of webinars that should be announced pretty soon. And directly related to, work, to your work, I'm very happy to announce that last week, the State Board of Education approved the documents that this body approved in November to begin a statewide instructional materials adoption in mathematics. Our team has already updated the mathematics instructional materials adoption webpage with the notice of intent, the schedule of significant events, and the standards and evaluation criteria maps. We are so very excited to begin this much needed process, which helps to implement the 2023 mathematics framework. Those are all the updates I have for you today. I guess I can keep talking for the rest of the day, but I'll, I'll stop there. I'm looking forward to all of the amazing work that this body will do and conduct throughout 2024. And with that said, I now turn things back over to Chair Guerra. Thank you, Dr. Torres, for those very important updates. Now I am going to go on to the next item, which is 1.I, Report of the State Board of Education. Board Member Lewis. Good morning. As the Chair has said, I am Brenda Lewis, and I'm one of two a State Board of Education liaisons. Unfortunately, uh, member uh, Cynthia Glover Woods is not able to be here today. But Cynthia and I have ongoing collaboration with our president of the State Board of Education, Linda Darling Hammond, the other State Board of Education members, the staff of the California Department of Education, the excuse me, Instructional Quality Commission, and other uh, supporters in the field to help with the ongoing important and impactful work that impacts our schools and our students every day across our public school system. 
And with that said, the work that the Instructional Quality Commission does to advise the State Board of Education regarding curriculum, regarding the uh, materials adoption process is very important work. And that has been more evident here recently with the work that is being done with the instructional materials for mathematics. So we thank each of you. Uh, we know that you have your everyday lives, your everyday jobs, and we very much appreciate each of you for taking the time and participating as members of the Instructional Quality Commission. And we very much acknowledge and appreciate the expertise that all of you bring to this commission and the important work that you all do. First, I would also like to, before I get into the recap of last week's board meeting, extend again a warm welcome to all the new commissioners. Uh, on behalf of President Linda Darling Hammond, Vice President Glover Woods, and the other members of the State Board of Education. Welcome and thank you. As you know, uh, as commissioners, you went through a very competitive process. And again, I, I do appreciate, we do appreciate all of the expertise that you bring to the group. Now moving on to the recap of last week's uh, January 18th State Board of Education meeting. The first order of business for the day was to nominate and reelect our president, Linda Darling Hammond, and our vice president, Cynthia Glover Woods, as uh, continuing in their positions as president and vice president of the State Board of Education. And following that, we were presented with uh, two students who will represent California at the United States Senate Youth Program in March in, of 24 of this year. We were also introduced to two student delegates. If for any reason any of the first two students cannot participate, they will step in. And I'd just like to give a shout out to students. Anytime we can acknowledge our students for the great work that they do, uh, we really want to acknowledge them. So I want to give you the names of those students. Uh, the first delegate is Aaron Combs, and he is a senior at Canyon Crest Academy in the San Dieguito Unified School District. And we have our second delegate, Emmy Sakamoto, who is a senior at Culver City High School in the Culver City Unified School District. And then our first alternate, as I said, if one or both of the delegates are not able to uh, fulfill their position, then one of the alternates will step in. And the first alternate is Mahi Haswani, who is a senior at Oak Ridge High School in the El Dorado Union High School District. And the second alternate is Layla Ali, and she is a senior at Joseph A. Gregory High School in the Modesto City High School District. So a big shout out and congratulations uh, to those students. And following that introduction, uh, we then heard several items that are probably of particular interest to the IQC. First, we heard a, uh, the CDE requested feedback and approval for the receipt of the California Science Test, the CAST, Innovation Concept Paper. And just to give you a little background, as you know, the CAST is what California uses to assess the California Next Generation Science Standards. And the State Board of Education first approved this high-level test back in 2016 and then approved the blueprint. Excuse me, can't seem to talk this morning. Should have took one of those donuts. Got my adrenaline going. And the blueprint in 2017. And then the blueprint was piloted for three years. And then in 2020, the State Board, with some modifications to the blueprint, approved it. And since then, in 2022, uh, the California Department of Education has worked closely with the Assessment Contractor Educational Testing Services uh, to do a review of the existing performance task. Uh, and a similar framework for the use of those performance tasks in assessment systems. And the concept, concept paper describes the research that was conducted by ETS and a proposal for an innovative approach for future designs and development of the CAS. And the proposed approach would include performance tasks embedded in learning, otherwise known as PTELs, 
that would provide students and teachers with engaging and authentic experiences as they study science. And so it was made clear that, you know, SBE's approval of this item is just the beginning of much deeper conversations and discussion. And moving on to the second item, and as this group is well aware, the California Mathematics Framework was approved in July of 2023. And this body reviewed and approved several draft documents relating to the 2025 instructional materials adoption at your last November meeting. And just a reminder of those items, they were the California Mathematics Instructional Materials Adoption Notice of Intent, the Schedule of Significant Events, an online application to serve on the review panel, an evaluation criteria map, and the standards map template. And the State Board of Education approved all of these documents and the CDE plans to begin accepting applications for reviewers in April of this year. And with regards to literacy, the State Board of Education also approved the California Department of Education's recommendations for the appointment of nine individuals to serve on a panel of experts to establish a list of screening documents for students grade K through 2 who might be at risk for reading difficulties, and it also includes uh, possible neurological disorders or dyslexia. The list of these evidence-based, culturally, linguistically, and developmentally appropriate screening documents is scheduled to be completed by December of this year. And in my final uh, item to report, the, CB, the SBE received an update on the CDE's Artificial Intelligence Statewide Initiative, and specifically, the CDE guidance document entitled Learning with Artificial Intelligence and Learning About Artificial Intelligence. And we had a presentation from a practitioner in the field that really emphasized the potential transformative uh, opportunities for using artificial intelligence in the classroom, but also coupled that with the need for rigorous safety measures and definitely a foundation of equity for all students. And that concludes my SBE report. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Lewis. Next item, 1J, is the approval of the 2024 IQC goals. Our next item on the agenda is to establish IQC goals for 2024. The public comment for this agenda item is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you would like to give public comment on the 2024 IQC goals. These are the proposed 2024 goals. One, ensure that every member of the Instructional Quality Commission, aka IQC, understands and adheres to the Bagley Keene Open Meeting Act. Two, provide support for the implementation of the mathematics framework. Three, provide support for the upcoming mathematics instructional materials adoption. Four, provide support for, the, for launch events, rollout plans, and professional learning activities associated with the curriculum frameworks, model curricula, and instructional materials as appropriate. Number five, ensure that the IQC priorities reflect the advisory needs of the State Board of Education. And finally, number six, engage and participate in a continuous improvement protocol as the IQC works through relevant curriculum and instructional instruction issues. Are there any questions or comments about the proposed goals for 2024? Seeing no one wanting to discuss, can I have a motion to approve the 2024 goals as presented? So moved. Commissioner McGaffey, I almost called you a senator. Um, <laughs> Commissioner McGaffey has moved. Uh, is there a second to the motion? Second. Commissioner Friedman has made the second. Is there any discussion? Any public comment? We do have public comment. 
Caller with phone number ending in 4525, you may now begin. Hello, my name is Renee Scarron. Um, I am uh, here to represent the English Learner Success Forum, a nonprofit organization that increases the supply of high quality instructional materials that center linguistic assets of students. We're very excited about the promising vision set forth by the, the Board of Education. And um, through our work, we've learned that executing a vision that transforms the lives of students requires really clear and explicit guidance from education leaders on what quality materials should look like. This means including more specific adoption guidance around criteria and indicators that outline um, research-informed practices that have proven to support student learning, particularly for multilingual learners who are too often an afterthought. Um, so we would like to see more specific adoption guidance around training of uh, reviewers. Thank you. Thank you. There is no more public comment. Thank you, Denise. The public item for this item is now closed. I now call for a vote. All those in favor? All opposed? Anyone abstaining? The motion passes. Next item is 1K, approve the 2025 IQC meeting dates. The public comment line for this item is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you would like to give public comment on this item. I will now turn the meeting over to Executive Director Torres to introduce this item. Thank you so much, Chair Guerra. Um, commissioners, you have before you the, um, the proposed 2025 IQC meeting dates. I know we just started 2024, uh, but we, we, we really want to schedule some of these dates so that they are blocked off on our calendars. Now that we have an approved schedule of significant events for the 2025 Mathematics and Structural Materials Adoption, we now have a better idea of some ideal dates for this, um, for this body. You'll notice that we follow the same structure as we have in the past, where we are reserving the potential of a two-day meeting on most months where there is a State Board of Education meeting. We may not need all of these meeting dates, but want to be prepared in the event we do need all of them. Uh, you'll also notice a one-day meeting in August, um, the purpose of which is to hold a public comment hearing, which must be held upon the conclusion of the mathematics and structural materials deliberations. Following that public comment hearing, this body will then review the public comments and the final instructional material reviewer reports that include the recommendations for programs that were submitted for review, um, that were submitted for review at its September meeting to, to make final recommendations to the State Board of Education at their November meeting. That concludes the background for consideration for these meeting dates. Is there any public comment? There is no public comment. The public comment line for this item is now closed. I call, I now call for a vote. All those in favor of the IQC 25 dates? All opposed? Any abstentions? The motion passes. The next item is 1L, approve and recommendations to the State Board of Education, the amended bylaws of the commission. The public comment for this line item is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you would like to give public comment. I will now turn the meeting over to Executive Director Torres to introduce them. Thank you again. Um, last March, we brought forth before the <clears throat> IQC some substantive revisions to the IQC bylaws uh, of which this body uses in order to operate. Those bylaws had not been updated for many, many years, and we took the opportunity to, to update them to reflect our current practices. One of those major changes, as an example, was the inclusion of a student IQC member. Over the course of this past year, our team has identified and have taken notes on a few additional technical and minor changes 
for clarity and consistency with current practices uh, in the version that you have for consideration before you. Um, an example of something that's changed is an update to the student commissioner's term end date in order to better align with the traditional school year. The existing bylaws indicate that the student member will serve a one-year term from September 1st through August 31st. And in most cases, this would create a situation where the student member has graduated and is no longer a student by August 31st. And so subsequently, the proposed change is that the student will serve a single term that begins on September 1st and ends on June 30th, again, to align with a traditional school year. We have also updated and clarified references to interactions with the State Board liaisons, State Board of Education staff, and the State Board of Education members, as uh, there was still some, uh, the need for some clarity uh, in, on, on those roles to reflect current practices. The re remaining changes uh, to the bylaws are wholly technical in nature, and at this time, I now turn the meeting back over to Chair Guerra. Is there any public comment? There is no public comment. The public comment line for this item is now closed. I will call for a vote. All those in favor? All opposed? Anyone abstaining? The motion passes. Next item is 1M, approve and recommend to the SBE the proposed revised guidance for local instructional materials. The public comment line for this item is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you would like to give public comment on this item. I will now turn the meeting over to Jennifer Bentley, Education Administrator, to introduce this item. Good morning. Okay. Uh, good morning, Chair Guerra and Vice Chair Young. Good morning, the rest of the commissioners. Um, my name is Jennifer Bentley. I am the administrator of the Standards and Curricular Guidance Unit um, within Seaford. So a little background on the guidelines for local instructional materials adoption, or the GLIMA, as we have been calling it. Um, this is an update to an already existing document, although the updates we have made have drastically changed the previous version. Um, CDE presented a first draft of these changes back in August um, and were given feedback both in person and through public comment. Um, the second draft will reflect both your feedback and the public comment um, we received. I would now like to introduce Alejandro Hernandez and Michelle Fennell to talk about the work that they have done on this. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Um, my co-writer and co-presenter and I are very, very happy to be here um, to discuss the, the updates to this document <clears throat> um, that now include the recommendations that this body uh, made and the public provided. Um, yes, so Alejandro Hernandez and now Michelle is going to introduce herself. <laughs> Hello, I'm Michelle Fettel, also a consultant in the in Seaford. Okay. All right. So uh, we are going to just um, give you a few highlights of the. Um, edits that were made to this document based on your feedback as well as public comment. There are numerous other additional edits as well. We just wanted to highlight a few of the major ones for you um, so that you can find them throughout the document. We highlighted um, additional references to social content standards as well as California Education Code and pertinent legislation. Um, an example of that, you'll notice that um, there is a section on Assembly Bill 1078 included in the introduction. So that is one of the examples of that. We also included additional calls for parent involvement throughout the various processes, adding clarification where parents and community members can be involved, not in just the adoption, but throughout the review process as well. We, um, you'll notice that there are numerous additional links to resources for students with disabilities. There's a, sec a new section, um, as well as mentioned before, students with dyslexia, as well as students with English learners. So those are notable sections with um, a large amount of new content. We have included four new figures, 
one recommendation was figure four, the instructional materials decision tree, which is a flow chart to help LEAs through the process, as well as figure three, which is a table showing a sample approach to tally reviewers' results, which was direct um, from a comment regarding showing samples of how these things may look. So there's a tool for that as well. We also added um, <clears throat> two new tools. One is figure eight, which is focused on the support present in instructional materials for English learners specifically. And then figure nine is specific to English learners as well, but highlighting how well um, instructional materials highlight designated and integrated ELD. And a special shout out to uh, Commissioner Guerra for content in figure nine. And those are some of the, oh, we also added additional support for starting and conducting the review process. There's a timeline. We added more bullet points to that to guide um, LEAs in the entire process. Okay. So those are some of the major highlights. And I will now turn it over to Alejandro. So that brings us to today. <clears throat> in September, uh, this body reviewed the first draft uh, of the document that had been titled Guidelines for Piloting Textbooks and Instructional Materials. And again, the last time that, was, that document was updated was in 2015. Uh, today, we ha you have the opportunity uh, to review the inclusion of the, the new uh, recommended edits that Michelle just went over. And then um, <clears throat> after that, um, you can recommend it to the State Board of Education. In March, um, with your recommendations, the document will be updated and uh, sent to the State Board of Education for review and adoption at their March 2024 meeting. So at this point, there's opportunity for further discussion and additional recommendations uh, for edits and so on. Um, and again, we're gonna go sit down <laughs> and, and listen to any uh, additional suggestions you might have and then take notes. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. And I just wanna give a big shout out. I know that we asked for a lot and you guys did amazing. So I just wanna thank your staff, thank the staff like Snaps, like you guys did a great job. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it up to um, our commissioners. Are there any questions or comments on the presentation? Commissioner Hicks. Thank you, um, I would like to second what um, Chair Gura shared. I really wanna commend the Seaford staff. You had a lot of feedback coming at you from a lot of different directions. And um, I'm just really appreciative of the thoughtful integration of all of that feedback. Um, I also really appreciate the consistency and the purposeful integration and expansion of the social content standards. I think that was um, huge for our community in California, and I think that was done very well, as well as the expansion of the parent involvement um, sections. A couple of lingering questions or comments. Um, page five, um, this is a super little one, um, but it is no longer CSESA. They changed their name to California County Superintendents about a year ago. And um, while those links work right now, they might change. So you might wanna just get updated links for those. Um, on page eight, um, I'm still, um, I don't know if hung up's the right word, but I'm still a little bit concerned about the time frame recommendations. And I'd actually love to hear in a minute from um, my, my fellow commissioners who have been through the process of a pilot implementation just to, to see what your feedback is as well. Um, I'm just not sure that those time frames are super realistic having gone through many adoptions myself. Um, and then just a lingering question, and this may be just my um, not knowing ed code quite backwards and forwards yet, um, but at the bottom on page 43, it says LEAs may have materials available during open public hours. I just wanted to confirm with Seaford staff that this is a may and not a must, um, because I think in the back of my mind somewhere, I thought that there was language about providing access to um, the instructional materials during an adoption phase. So that's more of a, a question. Um, but that are, that's all of my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hicks. Commissioner Regosa? 
Thank you. I also would like to give high praise to your work. You were very thoughtful in incorporating all of our suggestions, and it's a really wonderful document. I appreciate the links that are also embedded. The adoption toolkits are amazing, so thank you for having them easily accessible in the document. Um, I wanted to, I had a couple of lingering questions as well, and, and maybe um, following up on Commissioner Hicks, um, idea there of the timeline. I did notice that on page seven on the bottom there was a note that says the time frames are suggested. So I'm wondering if that is where we're, you are allowing for flexibility in the schedule um, for LEAs to be able to follow the process. So I, when I, I underlined that and put, I really like this because I felt like it gave some flexibility. So I wonder if that addresses or um, your question on um, the suggested timeline on page I think it was the following page, um, eight and nine. So I just wanted to see if that was something that um, was intended to address that. Um, and I do appreciate the examples with the figures that were also embedded into the document. And I have some questions around page 12 and 13 um, where um, you are addressing figure three. And um, it's third minor. It just says in this, in this sample, about the third paragraph down on page 13, in this sample, NA was placed in some of the fields to illustrate one way to indicate that a standard is not part of a grade. And I was looking for that in the table, and I didn't notice it. So I was wondering if that was just maybe you know unintentionally left out. Unintentional, yes. Okay. The, the original draft of this table included more rows. Mm -hmm. And um, in order to shorten it, you know, uh, through conversation, we determined that it was not necessary to have that many rows. And guess what we did? <laughs> so I, I will, I will, we will address that. Okay. And then the other point on that same, in that same section, was um, the next paragraph down says, in this sample standards tally sheet, um, it mentions the color coding of green, yellow, and red. And I wonder if there was also maybe an intention to put the colors on that table as well to just further illustrate, or did you think maybe that was just enough to mention it? My understanding is uh, using color coding for accessibility purposes um, is uh, discouraged. Okay. And um, so that's why it, it needs to be in writing. Uh, but I, we, I can follow up, see if we can, in addition, include color. But my understanding is it, that's discouraged. Okay. And then just my very last thing was on page 18, um, second paragraph down, where you mention you're referencing figures 11, 12, and 13 that are, that are um, come into play later on in the document. I just thought it might be kind of helpful if you reference the page numbers they were on, so it was just like a quick flip to that page instead of having to hunt through the document to look for the, the figures that you're referencing. And that was all. Uh, because the, the page numbers continue to change, oh. uh, that's one of the reasons, and, and if this becomes a PDF, et cetera, uh, it, the page numbers might change, which is why in documents like the, the framework and the standards, you know, we now just reference the, the figure numbers and not so much the page numbers. Thank you for the clarification. And again, just such a wonderful document. You did excellent work. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Regosa. Any additional discussion or comments? Commissioner Vang? I too just want to compliment the C4 staff for a wonderful job. Um, as I review this document, um, I did not look at our previous um, recommendations, but as I reviewed it, I was like, oh yeah, I remember we talked about that. I remember we talked about that. So um, thank you for um, you know taking our feedback and putting it in in such a you know consistent and coherent way. Um, one thing that I did also think about was just really the timeline and um, the time frame for how long this would, uh, you know, take, but also allowing everybody that's going to participate to truly go through the process and uh, get the best instruction materials out. Um, I did also notice what uh, Commissioner Regoza mentioned about the suggested time um, frame. So I think that in a way uh, will um, counteract that and will um, suffice in this case. Um, 
I do also want to call out all the additional resources and all the links and stuff, and the little uh, flow chart was very helpful um, in that. And so one suggestion, I understand um, what you're talking about as far as accessibility. Maybe instead of actually uh, putting the colors on the table, just putting the word red or yellow, since you that's um, in the narrative, and then just showing it in the tables itself just so that it really will make that example explicit and how it will play out and during the, the uh, process. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Vang. Any other comments, discussion? Yes, Commissioner Zapata. Yeah, and again, of course, um, kudos, right? Continued for work. That's a lot of detail-oriented work, and so we appreciate um, you behind the scenes on that. I actually reflected on what Commissioner Ragosa was saying in regards to the figures. And I know that in our um, framework, sometimes um, we'll have an appendices or just a, um, a page of links to the figures. I saw that in some of the um, you know, ending pages, it'll say go back to that figure, but maybe if there was just a resource that had only the figures that we could print out so that when we have discussions, it's sort of like there. Um, I know that in the framework, it was very useful to just have a file with just the figures um, included. Thank you, Commissioner Zapata. I see smiling faces and no more hands. So uh, can I have a motion to approve the proposed revised guidance for local in instructional materials adoption with those few minor edits? I'll make a motion to approve. Commissioner Hicks has, has moved. Is there a second? I'll second. The, sec if the motion has been seconded by Commissioner Young. Is there any discussion? Public comment? There is public comment. Caller with phone number ending in 0195, you may begin. Hello, my name is Layla Bravo. I'm representing the English Center Success Forum, and we want to uh, commend uh, this guidance for local instructional adoption. Um, we just wanted to share two quick notes, um, uh, best practices that we've uh, in, had across other LEAs um, and uh, other states. So one is that when local criteria has uh, examples and non-examples incorporated, uh, that usually helps our viewers better understand what high quality supports would look like, especially for multilingual learners. And so that is one, one piece that we wanted to share. The other is that LEAs should also be engaging in professional learning for reviewers so that they understand what quality supports for multilingual learners actually look like. That's, you know, the difference between uh, a, a language objective that doesn't actually meet the content versus a language objective that does. Um, and again, we just commend uh, you all for this great work, especially uh, what was incorporated for English learners. Thank you. Caller with phone number ending in 0394. You may begin. Good morning, commissioners. This is Manuel Bonrostro, uh, Director of Policy at California Together. And I'm calling mainly to commend the Seaford staff and, and uh, this commission for your diligent work um, with this guidance. Uh, you've heard feedback and the feedback uh, largely was incorporated in this final document, and, and we just want to show our appreciation. Specifically, uh, the language around designated and integrated ELD is going to be helpful for school districts um, and also publishers across the state uh, in making sure that our English learners and their needs are incorporated. Uh, integrated ELD, as you know, is critical for English learners, but it also improves instruction for all students. Uh, we also show, we also appreciate the language around parent involvement. Uh, this is crucial um, as we seek to engage parents more in the process um, and also the inclusion of additional resources uh, that our partners have created um, is, is, is a very positive step. So again, thank you for hearing our feedback. Thank you for the people staff for your diligent work. Um, and, and we look forward to continuing to collaborate uh, in the process for, uh, for instruction and material adoption. Thank you. Caller with phone number ending in 4301, you may begin. 
Good morning, IQC Commissioners, Executive Director Torres. This is Lindsay Tornatori calling on behalf of the California County Superintendents and FISC, the Curricular Improvement and Support Committee. We would like to express our deep appreciation to the CDE Seaford staff for the updated document. We see our previous recommendations in the current draft, especially the mention of AB 1078 and more consistent guidance on the social content standards, which based on current events is one of the most important elements of an instructional materials adoption. We support the staff recommendation to adopt the current draft and respectfully request the CDE identify future opportunities to provide guidance on local instructional materials adoptions for content areas that do not have statewide adoptions. For example, health, ethnic studies, and computer science. We notice these subjects are not mentioned in the current document. In closing, and to echo uh, Commissioner Hicks's suggestion, we are no longer known as the CESA and ask that the document be updated to include our current names and websites, which I will be happy to follow up with an email to share with um, my Seaford colleagues. We thank the CDE and State Board for your partnership and look forward to continuing to support the effort that increases the access to high quality instructional materials for all of our students throughout the state. Thank you very much. Thank you. There is no further public comment. The public comment line for this item is now closed. I now call for a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Anyone abstaining? The motion passes. We will now take a 15 minute break. you are not a member of the executive committee, please turn your nameplate down. The public comment line for this, com I'm sorry, the public comment line for this committee is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you would like to give public comment on this agenda item. Commissioners, a completed chart indicating your committee preferences can be found in your folder. I will reference the chart as I make IQC chair selections, and the executive committee will use it as we make committee assignments. Please recall the responsibilities for committee chairs were detailed during yesterday's orientation meeting. I'm going to select my committee chairs now, not mine, our. Our, our committee chairs. Um, for the ELA ELD subcommittee, Ku Vang. For the math committee, Janet Lanning. For the history social studies committee, Kimberly Young. Um, Commissioner Garrett, can um, ask them to accept the duties? Oh, I thought he did that at the end, sorry, as a group. So do it one at a time? Yes. Yes. Okay, um, let's start over. Kimberly Vang. Do you accept the chair for the ELA ELD subcommittee? I do. I feel like we're getting married. <laughs> uh, Janet, uh, Commissioner Janet Lanning, do you accept the chair for the math subcommittee? I accept. For the history social science committee, Commissioner Young, do you accept the chair position? Yes, I do. Thank you. For the science committee, committee uh, Commissioner McGaffey, do you accept the chair position? Yeah. Or the health subcommittee, Commissioner Hicks, do you accept the chair position? I do. Or the PE subcommittee, Commissioner Reina Guerra out of left field, do you accept? I do. <laughs> For the arts, Commissioner Friedman, do you accept the chair position? Yes, I do. For the Subcommittee for World Language, Commissioner Regosa, do you accept the chair position? I do. For the Ed Tech um, Subcommittee, Commissioner Young, do you accept? I do. And for the Ad Hoc Committee, Commissioner Zapata, do you accept the chair position? I accept. Thank you all to the chairs.
So members of the executive committee, let us consult the survey results and decide on who should serve on each of the committees. Let's start with English language arts. So for English language arts, there will be seven committee members. Uh, Commissioner Vang is the chair. Recommendations for who should be on that subcommittee? Um, I think if we start with those that placed it in their top two. Okay. I get this to. So that would be Commissioner Durant, Commissioner Hernandez, Commissioner Regosa, Commissioner Lanning, and Commissioner Zapeta. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need one more. So Commissioner Hicks would be the seventh. Would you agree? Commissioner Bing. Oh, day count Commissioner Bing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Am I miscounting? Commissioner Durant, Commissioner Hernandez, Commissioner Lanning, Commissioner Regosa, Commissioner Vang, and Commissioner Zapata. Do I count as one of the seven? Even though I'm on all of them? No, um, so no, you do it's not. It's seven plus me. Seven plus the, the chair. So we need one more. Commissioner Hicks, would we agree with that? Student member. Oh, student member. Uh, so. Um, I think maybe Commissioner Hicks, because I, I think if we, if, as we move down, maybe Commissioner, Student Commissioner may get his one and two. What do you guys think? Yes. Okay, so let's go with Commissioner Hicks. So the final ELA ELD subcommittee will be Commissioner Durant, Commissioner Hernandez, Commissioner Hicks, Commissioner Lanning, Commissioner Regosa, Commissioner Vang as the chair, and Commissioner Zapata. Let's move on to the math subcommittee. So do we want to do the same process? So Commissioner Lanning is the chair. So that would be Commissioner Bradshaw, Commissioner Reina Guerra, Commissioner Winnower, Commissioner Zapata, and Commissioner Student Commissioner Chen. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I think Commissioner McGaffey should be number seven. Great. We agree with that? Yes. Yes. Great. So the final math commission um, subcommittee will be uh, Commissioner Bradshaw, Commissioner Lanning as the chair, Commissioner McGaffey, Commissioner Reina Guerra, Commissioner Winnower, Commissioner Zapata, and Commis Student Commissioner Chen. Let's go to the history social studies. So Commissioner Friedman, Commissioner Young is the chair, and student member, sure, student commissioner uh, Chen. Are we good with that? Yep. Great. So the final science subcommittee will be, or sorry, history. Uh, commissioner Friedman, uh, Commissioner Young is the chair, and student commissioner Chen, uh, science. We have Commissioner McGaffey as the chair, Commissioner Fry, and Commissioner Winnower. Yes. Yes? Okay, so final is Commissioner Fry. Commissioner Fry, is it Fry or Fry? Fry, okay. Commissioner Fry, Commissioner McGaffey as the chair, and Commissioner Winnower. For health, we have Commissioner Hicks as the chair, Yes, Commissioner Friedman and Commissioner Fry. Great, so final, again, Commissioner Friedman, Commissioner Fry, and Commissioner Hicks. PE, um, we have Commissioner Reina Guerra as the chair, Commissioner Hernandez, and who is a little light? Let's 
Commissioner I would agree with Commissioner Durant. Yes. yes. Okay. So final for PE is Commissioner Durant, Commissioner Hernandez, and Commissioner Reina Guerra. The arts, um, Commissioner Friedman is the chair. So we'll need two more commissioners. Two more commissioners. Let's see. Commissioner Vang, maybe? And Commissioner Lanning? Oh, uh, well, Commissioner Lanning, I have her on two. I have her on language arts and math. Those are two kind of big ones. Commissioner Hicks? Oh, no. You, let's see. And what about uh, Commissioner Winower? Commissioner Winower? Or Bradshaw? Let, let's do Commissioner Winower because she's, she's one of our veterans. Does that work? Okay. Oh, uh, well, that's going to be a little weird. Oh, maybe not. Okay. So Commissioner Friedman is the chair for the arts. Commissioner Vang and Commissioner Winnerer make up the commission, or that uh, subcommittee, arts subcommittee. World languages, we have Commissioner Regos as the chair, Commissioner Friedman and Commissioner Reina Guerra. Agreed? Yep. Ed Tech. We have Commissioner Young as the chair, Commissioner Winnower, and Commissioner Bradshaw. Okay. Ad hoc, we have Commissioner Zapata as the chair, Commissioner Durant, Commissioner Fry, Commissioner Hicks, Commissioner Vang. Just a quick pause, the educational technology. Oh, did I miss EdTech? I said it in my brain. Um, sorry. The three at this time, and yes. we need seven. Oh, seven. Oh, we only had seven. Or we need seven. Sorry. I thought it was another three. Okay, so we're at three. We nice the three yes, now. the three that we have are Commissioner Bradshaw, Commissioner Winnower, and Commissioner Young. Yes. Commissioner Hernandez. Commissioner McGaffey. Um, or do we want him on ad hoc? I think maybe if we kind of look at ad hoc and mm -hmm. ed tech together. Are you guys okay with that? Student member Chen also had ed tech listed. Oh, he did. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Do we say Commissioner Zapata for Ed Tech? Uh, we did not, but she's light as well. Yeah, let's get, yeah, let's, mm, never mind. Because she's already on, she wanted ad hoc, so maybe not. Yeah. Um, let's see. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. I want to show Commissioner Lanning is having one device count. Lanning. Uh, she has yeah. ELA and math. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, for Commissioner Lanning, I think we could give her maybe ad hoc or ed tech. Ed tech? Ed tech? Ed tech. Okay, ed tech. Uh, Commissioner McGaffey, I think we can do one or the other. Yeah, since he was last year in Ed Tech, I agree with that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. seven. That gets us a seven, the magic number. Okay, so to confirm, Ed Tech is Commissioner Bradshaw, Commissioner Hernandez, Commissioner Lanning, Commissioner McGaffey, Commissioner Winnower. 
Commissioner Young as the chair and Student Commissioner Chen. Great. So for ad hoc committee, this is who I have so far. Um, Commissioner Durant, Commissioner Fry, Commissioner Hicks, Commissioner Vang, and Commissioner Zapata. And Commissioner Zapata is the chair. We need two more. Did we? No, he went to EdTech. Commissioner Reina Guerra, maybe? Um, how are we? How about Commissioner Bradshaw? You guys have seven? Commissioner Bradshaw, Commissioner Durant, Commissioner Fry, Commissioner Hicks, Commissioner Reina Guerra, Commissioner Vang, and Commissioner Azapeda as the chair. Yes. <laughs> Take a breath. Okay, so now Yeah, but what is that? I'm sorry, Dr. Torres, I need help on this one. So the concurrent committee for the California subject matter projects um, requires one representative from the Instructional Quality Commission um, for um, collaboration. So I need to pick somebody for the concurrence committee? That is correct. Okay. Concurrent, can, who was on it last year? Do we know? Commissioner Young. Oh, Commissioner Young. Commissioner Young, would you like to continue? Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, and the sun, the commission for the sunshine committee. That was Commissioner Lanning last year. Commissioner Lanning, would you like to continue? I accept. We continue to bring us sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We will now hear public comment on any items from the executive committee. Are there any members of the public wishing to make public comment on this item? There are not. Do you want me to read back all of the appointments? That would be amazing. Okay. <clears throat> so for the executive committee, we have Chair Guerra and then Vice Chair Young with additional members Hicks, Reina Guerra, and Regosa. For the ad hoc committee, we have Chair Zapata Members Durant, Fry, Hicks, Vang, Bradshaw, and Reina Guerra. For arts, we have Chair Friedman and members Vang and Winnower. For EdTech, we have Chair Young with members Winnower, Bradshaw, Hernandez, Chen, Lanning, and McAfee. For English language arts, English language development, we have Chair Vang and members Durant, Hernandez, Raigosa, Lanning, Zapata, and Hicks. For health, we have Chair Hicks and members Friedman and Fry. For history social science, we have Chair Young with members Friedman and Chen. Math, Chair Lanning, members Bradshaw, Reina Guerra, Winnower, Zapata, Chen and McGaffey. For physical education, we have Chair Reina Guerra, members Hernandez and Durant. Science, Chair McGaffey, members Fry and Winnower. World languages, Chair Regosa, 
with members Friedman and Reina Guerra. Our CSMP liaison is Commissioner Young, and our Sunshine liaison is Commissioner Lanning. Denise, can you do me one favor? Can you repeat the chairs for each session, each committee? Got it. Executive committee is you, Chair Guerra. Ad hoc committee is Zapeda, Arts, Friedman, EdTech. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. Friedman. EdTech, Young. EdTech, Young. ELA, ELD, Vang. Health, Hicks. History, Social Science, Young. Math, Lanning. P.E. Raina Guerra, Science McGaffey, and World Languages Regosa. Thank you. And there is no public comment. The public comment line for this item is now closed. I now close the executive committee meeting. I call the ad hoc committee meeting to order. The public comment line for this committee is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you would like to make public comment on matters related to this committee. Commissioner Guerra. Yes. The um, ad hoc committee chair will call. Um, oh, sorry. Committee to order. I'm not calling any more to order. Okay, so ad hoc commissioner uh, Zapata, turning it over to you. Thank you. Okay. I call the ad hoc committee to order. The public comment line for this committee is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you'd like to make public comment on matters related to this committee. The members of the 2024 ad hoc committee are Commissioner Bradshaw, Commissioner Durant, Commissioner Fry, Commissioner Hicks, Commissioner Reina Guerra, and Commissioner Vang. Please put your name plate up if you are part of this, if you are a member of this committee. If you are not a member, please turn your name plate down. We are now at the election of vice chair. Our only item of business in this election of a vice chair. I call for nominations from the floor. I nominate Commissioner Vang. I apologize, I did not see who that was. Was that you? Oh. Commissioner Vang, Ku Vang. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Reina Guerra, for nominating Commissioner Kuvang. Okay. By acclamation, in accordance with the Roberts Rules of Order, Commissioner Reina Guerra has been nom or sorry, Commissioner Vang has been nominated by Commissioner Reina Vera. Guerra to be vice chair of the ad hoc committee. Does the committee approve? Oh, wait, we don't need to do that, right? Because it's just by acclamation. That's correct. So, Dr. Torres, do we move? So officially, Commissioner Vang is the vice chair of the ad hoc committee. And now we move to public comment. All right. We'll now hear public comment on any items for the ad hoc committee. Are there any members of the public wishing to make a public comment on this item? There is no public comment. The public comment line for this agenda item is now closed. I now close the ad hoc committee meeting.
the chair of the arts subject matter committee may now start the arts subject matter committee meeting. And that is Commissioner Friedman. I call the uh, arts subject matter committee to order. The public comment line for this committee is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you would like to give public comment on this agenda item. The members of the 2024 Arts Subject Matter Committee are Commissioner Friedman, Commissioner Vang, Commissioner Winnower. If you're a member of the Arts Subject Matter Committee, please put your nameplate up. If you are not a member, please turn your nameplate down. Okay, uh, our only item of business is the election of a vice chair for this subcommittee. I call for nominations from the floor. I nominate Commissioner Vang. Okay. Uh, by acclamation in accordance with Robert's rules of order, Commissioner Vang has been nominated by Commissioner Guerra to be vice chair of the Arts Subject Matter Committee. Does the committee approve the nomination of Commissioner Vang? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So by acclamation, Commissioner Vang that's, is nominated. To vote for Commissioner Vang, raise your hand. By acclamation. Oh, by acclamation. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. So we'll now hear public comment on any items for the Arts Subject Matter Committee. Are there any members of the public wishing to make public comment on this item? There is no public comment. Public comment line for this agenda item is now closed. I now close the Arts Subject Matter Committee meeting. I call the Education Technology Committee to order. The public comment line for this committee is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you would like to give public comment on the agenda item. The members of the 2024 Education Technology are uh, Commissioner Bradshaw, Commissioner Hernandez, Commissioner Lanning, Commissioner McGaffey, Commissioner Winower, and student member Ethan Chen. If you are a member of the Education Technology Committee, please put your nameplate up. If you are not a member, please turn your nameplate down. The only item of business is the election of a vice chair for this subcommittee. I call for nominations from the floor. I nominate Commissioner Winnower. So in Commissioner Winnower's absence, we can only nominate uh, for vice chair if, if the commissioner is present. Thank you. Other nominations? I nominate uh, Commissioner Lanning for vice chair. Thank you. I nominate um, Commissioner McGaffey for vice chair. Thank you. Okay, I'm practicing wait time for any other further nominations. Okay. Okay, because there is more than one nomination, we will hold uh, election by vote. The vote will be by show of hands. To vote, Commissioner Lanning was the first one. Commissioner Lanning, uh, please raise your hand. Thank you. To vote for Commissioner McGaffey, please raise your hand. Thank you. Commissioner McGaffey has been elected Vice Chair of the Education Technology Committee. We will now hear public comment on any items for the Educational Technology Committee. Are there Let's pause. 
Okay, so we are gonna redo our uh, nomination for the vice chair. Um, again, reminder, commissioners, only if you are a part of the ed tech um, subcommittee can you nominate somebody to be vice chair of the committee. It's all good, it's January, friends. It's like the Monday of the year. It's the Monday of the year. Okay, so let's, let's it was a nice dress rehearsal. Let's try this again. All right, so again, so commissioners who have their name plates up are those who are on the subcommittee. We're gonna open the floor again for nominations for vice chair. I nominate Commissioner McGaffey for vice chair. Thank you so much, Commissioner Lanning. Do we have other nominations? Okay. I'd like, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'd like to nominate Commissioner Hernandez for vice chair. All right, thank you. Okay, so because there is more than one nomination, uh, we will hold an election by vote. The vote will again be by show of hands. To vote for Commissioner McGaffey, please raise your hand. To vote for Commissioner Hernandez, please raise your hand. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner McGaffey, you have again been elected for vice chair of the Education Technology Committee. Thank you. <laughs> we will now hear public comment on any items for the Education Technology Committee. Are there any members of the public wishing to make public comment on this item? There is no public comment. Thank you. Okay, uh, so with that, uh, public comment line for this agenda item is now closed. And I now close the Education and Technology Committee meeting. I call the English Language Arts, English Language Development Subject Matter Committee to order. The public comment line for this committee is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you would like to give public comment on this agenda. The members of the 2024 English Language Arts, English Language Development Subject Matter Committees are uh, Commissioner Durant, Commissioner Hernandez, Commissioner Regoza, Commissioner Lanning, Commissioner Zapata, and Commissioner Hicks. If you are a member of the English Language Arts, English Language Development subject matter, please put your nameplate up. If you are not a member, please turn your nameplate down. Our only item of business is the election of a vice chair for this subcommittee. I call for nominations from the floor. I nominate Commissioner Zapata. <laughs> Do we have any other nominations? Okay, so I now close nominations. By acclamation, in accordance with Robert's rule of order, Commissioner Hicks Excuse me, uh, Commissioner Zapata has been nominated by Commissioner Hicks to be Vice Chair of the English Language Arts, English Language Development uh, Devo Subject Matter Committee. Does the committee approve of the nomination of Commissioner Zapata? Commissioner Zapata is Vice Chair of the English Language Arts, English Language Development Subject Matter Committee. We'll now hear public comment on any items for the English Language Arts, English Language Development Subject Matter Committee. Are there any members of the public wishing to make public comment at this time? There is no public comment. The public comment line for this agenda item is now closed. I now close the English Language Arts, English Language Development Subject Matter Committee meeting. I call the Health Subject Matter Committee to order. The public comment line for this committee is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you would like to give public comment on this agenda item. The members of the 2024 Health Subject Matter Committee are Commissioner Friedman and Commissioner Fry. If you're a member of the Health Subject Matter Committee, please put your name plate up. If you are not a member, please turn your name plate down. 
Our only item of business is the election of a vice chair for this subcommittee. I call for nominations from the floor. I nominate Commissioner Friedman as vice chair. I now close the nominations. By acclamation, in accordance with Robert's rule of order, Commissioner Friedman has been nominated by Commissioner Fry to be vice chair of the Health Subject Matter Committee. Does the committee approve the nomination of Commissioner Friedman? Yes. Commissioner Friedman is vice chair of the Health Subject Matter Committee. We'll now hear a public comment on any items for the Health Subject Matter Committee. Are there any members of the public wishing to make public comment on this item? There is no public comment. Denise, the public comment line for this agenda item is now closed. I now close the Health Subject Matter Committee meeting. I call the History Social Science Subject Matter Committee to order. The public comment uh, for this committee is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you would like to give public comment on this agenda item. The members of the 2024 History Social Science Subject Matter Committee are uh, Commissioner Friedman and student member Ethan uh, Chan. If you are a member of the History Social Science Subject Matter Committee, please put your name plate up. If you are not a member, please turn your name plate down. Our only item of business is the election of a vice chair for this subcommittee. I call for nominations from the floor. And you can nominate Commissioner Chen. Okay. Okay. Uh, by acclamation, in accordance with Robert's rules of order, Commissioner Chen has been nominated by Commissioner Friedman uh, to be vice chair of the History Social Science Subject Matter Committee. Does the Subject Matter Committee approve the nomination of Commissioner Chen? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Chen is the vice chair of the History Social Science Subject Matter Committee. We will now hear public comment on any items uh, for the History Social Science Subject Matter Committee. Are there any members of the public wishing to make public comment on this item? There is no public comment. Thank you. The public comment line for this agenda item is now closed. Uh, I now close the History Social Science Subject Matter Committee meeting. I call the Mathematics Subject Matter Committee to order. The public comment line for this committee is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you'd like to give public comment on this agenda item. The members of the 2024 Mathematics Subject Matter Committee are Commissioner Bradshaw, Commissioner Raina Guerra, Commissioner Winower, Student Commissioner Chen, Commissioner Zapeta, and Commissioner McGaffrey. If you are a member of the Mathematics Subject Matter Committee, please put your name plate up. If you are not a member, please turn your nameplate down. Our only item of business in the election, our only item of business is the election of a vice chair for this subcommittee. I call for nominations from the floor. I'd like to nominate um, Commissioner Reina Guerra. I didn't catch the name. And Commissioner Zapata nominated Commissioner Raina Guerra for Vice Chair. I'd like to nominate Commissioner McGaffey. Commissioner Raina Guerra nominated Commissioner McGaffey for Vice Chair. Because there is more than one nomination, we will hold an election by vote. The vote will will be by a show of hands to vote for Commissioner Rena Guerra. Please raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. To vote for Commissioner McGaffey, please raise your hand.
Commissioner Reina Guerra has been elected Vice Chair of the Mathematics Subject Matter Committee. We will now hear public comment from, on any items from the Mathematics Subject Matter Committee. Are there any members of the public wishing to make public comment on this item? There is no public comment. The public comment line for this agenda item is now closed. I close the Mathematics Subject Matter Committee meeting. I call the Physical Education Subject Matter Committee to order. The public comment line for this committee is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you would like to give public comment on this agenda item. The members of the 2024 Physical Education Subject Matter Committee are Commissioner Durant and Commissioner Hernandez. If you are a member of the Physical Education Subject Matter Committee, please put your nameplate up. If you are not a member, please turn your nameplate down. Our only item of business is the election of a vice chair for this subcommittee. I call for nominations from the floor. I nominate Commissioner Durant. I now close the nominations. By acclamation, in accordance with the Roberts Rules of Order, Commissioner Durant has been nominated by Commissioner Hernandez to be Vice Chair of the Physical Education Subject Matter Committee. Commissioner Durant is Vice Chair of the Physical Education Subject Matter Committee. We will now hear public comment on any items for the Physical Education Subject Matter Committee. Are there any members of the public wishing to make public comment on this item? There is no public comment. The public comment line for this agenda item is now closed. I now close the Physical Education Subject Matter Committee meeting. I call <clears throat> the, sub the Science Subject Matter Committee to order. The public comment line for the committee is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you'd like to give public comment on this agenda item. The members of the 2024 Science Subject Matter Committee are Commissioner Fry, Commissioner McGaffey, and Commissioner Winower. If you are a member of the Science Subject Matter Committee, please put your nameplate up. If you are not a member, please turn your nameplate down. Our only item of business is the election of a vice chair for this subcommittee. I call for nominations from the floor. I nominate. Commissioner Fry. I now close the nominations. By acclamation, in accordance with Robert's Rules of Order, Commissioner Fry has been nominated by Commissioner Guetta to be Vice Chair of the Science Subject Matter Committee. Commissioner Fry is Vice Chair of the Science Subject Matter Committee. We'll now hear public comment on any items for the Science Subject Matter Committee. Are there any members of the public wishing to make public comment on this item? There is no public comment. The public comment, the public comment line for this agenda item is now closed. I now close the Science Subject Matter Committee meeting. I call the World Languages Subject Matter Committee to order. The public, public comment line for this committee is now open. Please follow the instructions on the screen if you would like to give public comment on this agenda item. The members of the 2024 World Languages Subject Matter Committee are Commissioner Friedman and Commissioner Reina Guerra, myself, Commissioner Regoza. If you are a member of the World Languages Subject Matter Committee, please put your name plate up. If you are not a member, please turn your name plate down. Our only item of business is the election of a vice chair for this subcommittee. I call for nominations from the floor. I nominate Commissioner Reina Guerra. Any other nominations? Okay, I now close the nominations. By acclamation, in accordance with Robert's Rules of Order, Commissioner Reina Guerra has been nominated by Commissioner Guerra um, to be Vice Chair of the World Languages Submit Subject Matter Committee. Um, Commissioner Reina Guerra is Vice Chair of the World Languages Subject Matter Committee. We'll now hear public comment on any items for the World Languages Subject Matter Committee. 
Are there any members of the public wishing to make public comment on this item? There is no public comment. The public comment line for this agenda item is now closed. I now close the World Languages Subject Matter Committee meeting. I now would like to reconvene the full IQC. If you could put your blame plates up. And that's all of our business for today. Congratulations to everybody's um, new positions in terms of chair, vice chair, and to all of our new members for going through the process. I know it was a whirlwind, um, but you, you made your first meeting. Woohoo! I now adjourn today's meeting. <laughs>